Welcome to the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul Podcast, a weekly conversation about self-care, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I am your host, Janelle. I am a social worker, a self-care life coach, and an advocate for the effects of parental substance abuse based out of New York. For more information, visit my website at jsselfcare.org. I want to welcome my new listeners, and I also want to welcome my returning listeners. If you can please share this episode, because there is someone in this world who needs to listen to this episode. I also want to personally thank you for making a JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul podcast part of your weekly routine. I truly, truly appreciate you. You know that taking care of yourself is important for your mental health, but let's face it, there's kind of a lot going on with early voting and COVID vaccinations. Practicing self-care doesn't always have to be me time or reading a book because you think you should or you saw a post on social media encouraging you to take some much needed time. Don't get me wrong, me time is important and necessary. Knowing the different types of self-care means you switch up your routine to meet your mind, body, and soul needs. We sometimes prioritize depending on our immediate needs. For example, you need to pay your rent or mortgage, so you go to the job you love to hate to work for the needed money to pay your rent. That's taking care of your financial self-care. You've been locked in your home for over a year and you want to spend time with your family and friends. You are tired of the Zoom happy hours and you're like, I am ready to go back in the world where I can physically touch my loved ones. That's considered social self-care. As I've said before, mental health equals mental wealth. As I've always said, self-care is the way we show ourselves how much we truly love ourselves. So let's get into the eight domains of self-care needed to live a life full of abundance. Get your pen and papers or electronic devices ready and jot down the eight domains of self-care. And if you need to implement one because you are not pleased with the way you've been handling things, please do so. Also a quick FYI. I am planning on turning these domains into a masterclass so we can all become self-care masters. Make sure you stay tuned for the dates. Self-care is the act of engaging in activities to gain or maintain the optimum level of overall mental health. So without further ado, let's get into the eight domains of self-care. The first domain is physical self-care, which is the movement of the body. It's important to start with the basics. Taking a tiered approach to self-care can make it all seem not quite as intimidating. Consider making sure you do at least two or three of the following each day. Well, for me, I would say do it every day. Brush your teeth. Take a bath or a shower. Drink a few glasses of water. Eat some food and let yourself rest. If you've got the basics under control, you might also be interested in changing into going out clothes, even if you're not going anywhere but downstairs to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. They say when you look good, you feel good. You might also integrate exercise to keep your body and mind in sync. Meeting the baseline is important because, well, it's a baseline. You need a strong foundation to build your self-care house. Here are a few more examples of physical self-care you can include in your daily routine. Movement of the body like exercising, going for a walk, or even cleaning your house from top to bottom. The next one is taking care of all your medical needs, going to the doctor and following up with the medical physician's advice. Our next one is sleep, making sure you are resting and not tossing and turning. The goal is to get the proper amount of hours of sleep. And if you're not resting, look up the seven areas of rest because there could be an area that you're missing. Our next one is physical touch. Movement could include hugging yourself or hugging your loved ones. Just physically touching someone is a great way to take care of your physical self-care. Sexual needs. There could also be a lot of movement 
when you're getting your sexual needs met. Sex is very important when you're taking care of your physical self-care. Our last one is nutrition, adding fruits and vegetables to your daily diet. It's also physical movement, but you also want to add your fruits and vegetables because we're talking about physical self-care and taking care of our bodies. The second domain is psychological self-care, which is learning new things. When was the last time you tried to learn something in depth that wasn't full work? Figuring out how to bake it or how to move different isn't just about doing what's hip in your social life this week. Learning something new can recharge your brain and make you feel excited about not knowing everything. Psychological self-care can include anything from reading a book, listening to a podcast, watching a documentary, or diving into or binge watching your favorite TV show. Psychological self-care is being intentional about giving your brain new things to do that can help you feel accomplished and sharp. We need to feel that we continue growing, even while experiencing the stagnation caused by the pandemic. Here are a few more things you can do for psychological self-care. Applying consequential thinking. Consequential thinking allows individuals to access their choices, to anticipate how people will react, and to follow their intentions. In other words, consequential thinking is about considering the likely outcomes of one's behavior before acting out. You can also practice mindfulness. Pay attention. It's hard to slow down and notice things in a busy world. Live in the moment. Try to intentionally bring an open, accepting, and discerning attention to everything you do. Accept yourself. Treat yourself the way you would treat a newborn baby. Focus on your breathing. You can also journal. Journaling, grab your favorite journal and just write. Sometimes you just need to free write your thoughts. Just whatever you're feeling, your thoughts, just write them down. Or you could do a digital detox, a period of time during which you refrain from using electronic devices such as smartphones, computers, regarded as an opportunity to reduce stress or focus on social interaction in the physical world. Learn a new skill. Is there something you always wanted to do but don't know how to do it? Well, take this time to learn how to do it. All you have to do is go to YouTube University. Our next domain is emotional self-care, which involves enhancing emotional literacy, navigating emotions, increasing empathy. Are you journaling, taking necessary time away from the news, and doing something every day that makes you laugh? Listen to Kevin Hart. You'll be laughing all day. Take some time to think of the activities that make you feel emotionally fulfilled. It might be volunteering with your local youth or center Or it might be holding up in your favorite chair and doing nothing all day but reading bestsellers or listening to the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul podcast. Of course, emotional self-care is going to overlap with all the other forms of self-care. The more you practice each type, the stronger every other type can become. Here are a few more examples of emotional self-care. Saying no. How hard is saying no? Very hard, but we have to say no, especially when things does not fit well with our souls. The next one is make time for reflecting on your feelings. Self-reflection is the key to self-awareness. It allows us to look neutrally at our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions. Through this practice, we are able to look at ourselves with interest and curiosity. Our next example is developing emotional literacy. Emotional literacy is the ability to read, identify, label, understand, and act upon the feelings, emotions of oneself and others in a healthy and socially acceptable manner. Our next example of emotional self-care is Being aware of your own boundaries. Ask yourself, what are your likes and dislikes regarding the way people treat you? And set boundaries and consequences for when someone crosses your boundaries. The next one is write in a gratitude jar. Grab a jar and every day write down what you are grateful for and place it in your jar. 
And when you're feeling out of sorts, go to the jar and pick a piece of paper out and say, what are you grateful for? It's a great reminder that you may be going through something right now, but you have so much to be grateful for. Our last one is practice self-compassion. Emotional self-care we're talking about. Practice self-compassion. Self-compassion entails being warm and understanding towards ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate. Rather than ignoring our pain or beating ourselves with self-criticism. Our next domain is social self-care. This is one of my favorites because social self-care allows you to be around like-minded people and also allows you to be around your family and friends who you love so deeply. Social interaction can help you feel fulfilled, validated, and loved, but sometimes yet another Zoom hangout is draining. That's where social self-care comes in. Boundaries are one of the essential concepts in self-care. Without them, we cannot say that we are taking care of ourselves. Focus on communicating clearly when you need to pull it back and just focus on you. I love hanging out with you, but I need some time to myself tonight. Can be a good way to start. Saying yes and making sure you have the social engagement you need to thrive is also an important part of the equation. Try to practice reaching out when you need help or company because it gets easier at each time you challenge yourself to do so. There are a few more social self-care examples. One is involves having a support group and network of relationships around you whom you trust and turn to when you need to. You got to have your support group around you. The next one is having caring and supportive people around you helps you build a sense of belonging and connectedness. You want to connect to the people that you're around. Our next one is ask for help when you need help. If you're around like-minded people, you won't be afraid to ask for help because they won't judge you and talk about you. The next one is honor your commitments to others. Once you say yes, honor that commitment if you can. Because sometimes you got to turn that yes into a no once you see what the commitment is all about. The next one is social media follow like-minded people and delete those annoying posts. You don't want to see those posts where people are fighting and all that. Delete those posts and delete the people who are posting them. Remember, energy attracts energy, so you will attract that negative energy. Our last one is meet new people. It's okay to have your circle, but it's also okay to grow your circle and meet new people. It's a great way to implement social self-care. I've met some dope people on the Clubhouse app who became family. So it's okay to meet new people. That's social self-care. Our next domain is professional self-care. If you didn't have work-life balance, Pre-pandemic, your boss knowing exactly what your bookshelf looked like probably didn't help things. Learning to identify and effectively communicate your boundaries is key to professional self-care. If you need to keep your camera off during a meeting, then keep your camera off during a meeting. You're allowed to set boundaries. Professional self-care is also part of making your day-to-day as efficient as possible so you can spend less mental energy on caring from accounting. Professional self-care is keeping structured calendars or the do list with clear separations between work stuff and home life stuff. Identify things you probably absolutely need to do at work today and set the boundary you need at home to do whatever is left tomorrow and not after you eat dinner. Saying no will probably be a big part of this process, but that's all part of setting priorities. Another big boundary you might also try carving out a half an hour after work to journal or to take a walk or cook or even have a nice cold beer so you can calm down from the workday and transition into your home life. Here are a few more professional self-care tips you can use. Professional self-care involves sharing your strengths and gifts, having clear professional boundaries with lists, living in your purpose, taking a lunch break, move from the computer, and take a break, breathe, and relax. The work can wait. 
Professional self-care is knowing your role and responsibility. So you are not getting paid for one job but doing two, two jobs. Don't do nobody else's work. Know your role and responsibility. Negotiating your needs is simply the act of reaching an agreement as to how you'll move forward. It's the process of communicating back and forth with your supervisor and finally having all parties agree to a solution. There are so many ways to arrive at this agreement. Some people view negotiation as a game they have to win. You don't win them all, but you could win some. I suggest you attend as many professional development trainings as possible. As we all know, we want to grow and evolve in our profession, right? Our next domain is environmental self-care. Having an organized, well-maintained, and clutter-free work business and home environment, having clean clothes and a clean and well-maintained mode of transport. Some examples of environmental self-care, you can clean your car. Just make sure your space is decluttered so your mind is not cluttered. If you have not used it in a year, throw it out, throw it away. Don't hold on to papers and bills and items that are not of no use if you got a bill on the first, you're going to get another bill on the first the next month. Throw it out. Pay it and throw it out. What's the state of the kitchen table that you can use as a desk? Even your regularly scheduled messiness might hit different when you don't have anywhere else to be but home. Environmental self-care is the practice of taking care of your environment, like physical self-care. Checking off the basics can help you feel more grounded in your space. Photos of your found family or around your desk, a cozy blanket is always ready to be snuggled with on a couch, and a bedroom without your laundry on the floor can help you feel like you can breathe a bit easier. Environmental self-care is all about having your space clean and clutter-free. Our next domain is spiritual self-care. Having beliefs and values that are important to you and guide your life. That sense of deep calm you feel when you're totally immersed in your favorite thing can be a spiritual experience. No matter what your beliefs, lifting weights or sinking into your yoga practice might be your own version of spiritual self-care. I have had extremely powerful mental and emotional breakthroughs during my workouts. While it doesn't happen every time, I know that it can happen and that possibility is so exciting for me. I get to know myself and my thoughts most deeply during the most challenging of workouts. Meditation, helping others, or being in nature is also ways to tap into your spiritual side. Here are a few more examples of spiritual self-care. This includes pursuing your noble goals and practices that support developing your spiritual awareness, meditating, reflecting in a journal, going on an amazing retreat, walking in nature, praying, going to the house of worship if that is your belief, spending time with the universe, spending time talking to God, spending time talking to your ancestors, whatever your religious beliefs may be, Make sure you take the time out to indulge in your spiritual self-care. Our last domain is financial self-care. Being responsible with your finances and having a conscious relationship with your money. Knowing where your income is coming from. Knowing when your expenses are due and paying them on time. Keeping your health and life insurance up to date. Pay your co-pays. Completing your tax responsibilities on time to avoid those horrendous penalties. No matter what, take care of your finances. Financial self-care is so, so important. Pay your health insurance and your life insurance and always know when your bills are due. If it's due the 5th of every month, pay it on the 4th of every month. While I hope you love listening to and learning from this podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for mental health treatment. For those of you who are ready to get started by talking to a self-care life coach who can answer all your questions about self-care, 
I want you to schedule a free consultation at jsselfcare.org. If mental health treatment is needed, please don't hesitate to contact a therapist in your area. Self-care is important and necessary. Take care of you and continue to put you first no matter what. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and share. For daily doses of self-care affirmations and notes to self, make sure you join the JS Self-Care social media tribe on most social media platforms. My social media links will be placed in this episode notes.